I have recently written an article for New Eastern Outlook, and it's titled The Growing Weakness of Western Artillery Capabilities. And I will read it to you, and I will add additional context when and if necessary. And I will put the link to this article and everything that I cited in the article. I will place all of those links in the video description below, but I'll, I will read the article out loud just in case you don't feel like reading it yourself. And also, uh, to add this additional context. So let's begin. After decades of waging war against impoverished nations with destitute armies or no standing armies at all, the U.S. has suddenly found itself in a rapidly changing world where peer and near peer competitors are outpacing it in military capabilities. Many of these capabilities are showing up on the battlefield in places the U.S. has until recently enjoyed relative military superiority. One area the U.S. has found itself particularly weak in is artillery. The conflict in Ukraine has revealed a variety of shortcomings regarding not only U.S. artillery capabilities, but those of the collective West. The recent cancellation of the U.S. Army's Extended Range Cannon Artillery, ERCA, prototype, was just the most recent event among several reflecting Washington's realization that it is falling far behind. The other realization is that they're not making nearly enough artillery rounds. They need to expand artillery shell production. They have poured huge amounts of money into doing that. Even by the end of 2025, they will still be producing less than half of what Russia is alone producing. Let's continue. Defense News, in a March 12, 2024 article titled U.S. Army Scraps Extended Range Cannon Artillery Prototype Effort, uh, that's this article right here. It writes, the U.S. Army is changing its approach to acquiring a long-range artillery capability and is scrapping its 58 caliber extended range cannon artillery prototyping effort, according to the services acquisition chief. We concluded the prototyping activity last fall, Doug Bush told reporters at a March 8th briefing on the fiscal 2025 budget request. Unfortunately, it was not successful enough to go straight into production. The new plan, following an exhaustive tactical fire study meant to revalidate elements of the extended range cannon requirement, led by Army Futures Command, is to evaluate existing options from industry this summer to get a sense of the maturity of those systems. So they, they scrapped this prototype that they were working on to fire rounds more accurately at longer distances they've scrapped that and what they're going to do instead is test fire other artillery systems made by different companies from around the world the article explains that uh, the product uh, the prototypes began suffering from many of the same problems western artillery systems transferred to ukraine have suffered from such as excessive wear on the gun tube after firing a relatively low number of rounds. Until relatively recently, Western artillery systems were only required to fire relatively low numbers of rounds as part of fire missions targeting irregular militant forces in support of infantry. These missions would take place from static fire bases well out of reach of the small arms used by militants. These fire bases existed at the end of well-developed logistical networks capable of supporting artillery crews, both in terms of ammunition and maintenance requirements. This is in stark contrast to the intense positional fighting seen in Ukraine along the line of contact, where guns fire continuously day after day until barrels begin to deform, lose accuracy, and in some cases fail during firing, which includes explosions that can kill, that can maim or kill gun crews. The intensity of counter-battery operations means that artillery crews cannot easily perform repairs near the line of contact without becoming targets. Modern Western artillery pieces are simply not designed to meet this rate of fire or perform well in this type of combat environment, especially where well-protected logistical lines no longer exist. Another defense news article titled U.S. Army Ready's New Artillery Strategy Spurred by War in Ukraine would indicate the direction the U.S. will attempt to move to address the apparent deficiencies of Western artillery systems. Do you think that they're going to move in the right direction? No. The article noted, in particular, advances in propellant to enable mid-range guns to shoot at as far as long-range guns. The article also discussed 
robotics in the form of autoloaders for munitions. And if you listen to the, the defense industry and the people they interface with in Washington, this is all they talk about, American innovation. They're gonna use robots, they're gonna use AI, whatever other buzzword is floating around, they're going to use all of this to solve all of their problems. At the end of the day, it's all hand-waving. Both approaches, however, seem to be continuing in the same misguided direction the US and its NATO allies have moved since the Cold War. Over-engineered systems attempting to lever a technological edge over the quantities of Russian and Chinese arms and ammunition. The problem with this approach is that there is no longer a vast disparity between Western military technology and that of Russia or China. Both nations are capable of producing high quality weapon systems in large quantities. Additionally, as seen in Ukraine, Russia has created long range counter battery capabilities like the Lancet Kamikaze drone, able to find and strike Western artillery systems far beyond the range of Russia's own artillery systems. Having accurate longer range guns does not give the United States the advantage it thinks it will in any potential conflict with Russia or China. Should be noted that both Russia and China are increasingly transferring these weapons to other nations around the globe, limiting the number of potential targets of Western military aggression. In other words, these weapons that Russia and China are developing, they're ending up in a larger number of countries around the globe. And as militaries around the globe adopt these modern weapon systems, it creates a, a sense of deterrence against Western military aggression. There are a lot of countries the US would really love to go to war with, but they can't because now they have, uh, they have significant military forces defending their territory. Iran is, is one of these countries. Washington's problems continue to stem from its private industry dominated military industrial base, which favors profits over purpose and performance, preferring small numbers of expensive weapon systems over large volumes of simple but effective equipment. After abandoning the US Army's own ERCA prototype, it is now investigating existing systems like Israel's Elbit Systems Autonomous Truck Mounted Ordnance System Atmos as well as systems produced by the UK's BAE, France's Nexter, and others. Israel's Atmos self-propelled artillery system, for example, is operated by nations around the globe, but in single and double digit numbers. For example, some, some nations will have maybe eight of these self-propelled artillery pieces. Some countries might have up to 24 of them. Ultimately, they are made in small quantities. Countries are small are buying them in small quantities, quantities this small in a conflict like we see unfolding in Ukraine is, is simply not adequate. That is the point. The problem all of these systems share is the same dependence on over-engineered technology produced by a small supporting industrial capacity incapable of large-scale production. There is a similar deficiency in supplying the large quantities of ammunition required to meet the demands exhibited on the battlefield in Ukraine. CNN, for example, in a March 11, 2024 article would note that Russia alone is producing at least three times more artillery ammunition than the US and Europe combined. And I have cited this article several times in, in other videos already. No matter how capable any of these systems may be, including additional improvements made as part of the US Army's ongoing program, if respective military industrial bases are incapable of replacing these systems faster than they are removed from a future battlefield as they are in Ukraine today, their capability will make little difference in any potential conflict's ultimate outcome. You could have the best equipment in the world, could outperform your enemy's equipment can vastly be superior to enemy equipment, but if you have eight of them and your enemy has 800 inferior systems, that, that quantity becomes a quality all in its own. And if they're still on the battlefield firing and depleting your forces long after they've removed your superior weapon system off the battlefield, they win. Doesn't matter how great your weapon system was on paper, in reality, it failed because you didn't you didn't build it in the quantities necessary. 
It was designed so that it couldn't be built in the quantities necessary to succeed on the battlefield. Modern warfare is shifting as technological disparity closes, meaning that a handful of highly capable but high maintenance systems will no longer offer the US and its allies an advantage on the battlefield. Even in the Middle East, local militants are using drones and precision guided rockets to attrit US military hardware faster than the US can replace it. So far, these incidents have been far and few between. If a large scale conflict broke out between the US and Iran and Iran's many allies, U.S. capabilities would quickly suffer attrition and create an operational crisis for U.S. forces. And in many ways, we could already see this taking place in the Middle East. And you have to remember, the U.S. arms many of its proxies in the region. When Saudi Arabia had been an obedient U.S. proxy and was fighting Yemen, uh, Saudi Arabia was depleting the, the collective supply of Patriot interceptor missiles around the globe. And, and the Patriot missile system was struggling to intercept Yemeni missiles, drones, and rockets. Uh, so that's just one example of how these irregular forces are depleting U.S. weapon systems on the battlefield faster than they can be replaced by U.S. industry. Despite this reality taking clear shape, U.S. planners still cling to the myth of superior American innovation and the role private industry plays in lending the U.S. this supposed advantage. A recent U.S. National Defense Industrial Strategy report noted the many shortcomings of the current U.S. military industrial base, many of which the report admitted stemmed from private industry and more specifically private industry's desire to profit. And if the Department of Defense was asking private industry to do something that wasn't profitable, they simply would refuse to do it. That 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 is where many of these problems stem from. Uh, I Let me continue. But the report insisted that private industry was part of the solution rather than the source of the problem. And, and that is the problem. They cannot, they cannot identify private industry in the US as the primary uh, obstacle inhibiting Western military capabilities. They cannot, they will not, so this problem will never be resolved. Because the U.S. military industrial base is dominated by private industry, whom Washington serves rather than the other way around, industry profits, not actual capabilities, remain the top priority. As long as this equation persists, the U.S. will continue attempting to solve emerging problems by applying the same flawed mindset that is creating these problems in the first place. So whether it's artillery, air power, armor, it really doesn't matter. It's the same mindset creating all of these problems and they're using this mindset to try to solve the problems the mindset created in the first place it's a self-feeding loop and it's a self-defeating process and that's what we're watching and at the end of the day when you have a profit driven system purpose will always be subordinated to profit and you will never be able to solve these problems no matter how obvious they become and i, I can't imagine that these problems can become more obvious than they are on display in Ukraine, and yet the United States, its European allies, refuse to make the necessary changes. And by the way, if they made the necessary changes, putting purpose before profit, that would that would change the whole calculus in developing a foreign policy in the first place. They had a purpose-driven government, a purpose-driven industry, they would end up working with the rest of the world rather than trying to irrationally subordinate because there's no way that they can. The, the disparity the West once enjoyed was the basis of Western co colonization for generations. That is gone and it's not ever coming back. That's why it's irrational for them to continue pursuing it, saying nothing of it being immoral. Uh, and this will continue, and I will continue keeping an eye on all of this. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share. Think about subscribing. It's free to do. It helps the channel grow. Check the video description below for other places you can find and follow my work. Check the video description below for the link to this article that I wrote, as well as to all of the sources that I cited in the article. There are also ways you can support my work listed in the video description below. 
I do not monetize my YouTube channel or any of the other social media platforms that I'm on. If ads pop up, feel free to skip them. If you do want to help support my work, please do so through Buy Me A Coffee and also through Patreon. To everyone who has been helping out, whether it's a one-time donation, donations month to month, or even if you have no spare money and you're just helping by sharing my work with others online, that is all greatly appreciated. That all makes this work possible. So thank you. And as always, thank you for watching.